The European Space Agency's next flagship mission, the Euclid Space Telescope, could have just solved its problems of how it's actually going to get into space. You see, delays with building, European war and even competition from Amazon have left ESA facing huge problems with getting the spacecraft into space. But SpaceX might be about to come to the rescue on this one. Euclid is going to address some of the toughest questions in modern cosmology. What is dark matter? What is dark energy? And is it possible to launch a space telescope on time? It's actually already answered that last one with a resounding no, but it will address the other two mysteries by studying the shapes of galaxies at a wide range of redshifts, trying to understand how they change as we go back in time. Let me know in the comments if you want a full video on what Euclid's gonna do and how it's gonna do it because here I really want to focus on the ongoing saga of how it will launch. Be sure to do me a favour and subscribe to the channel too, and that way you won't miss out on all the fun future videos that are planned. Euclid is a medium class ESA mission, and in theory its budget should have been about 5 or 600 million euros, you know, medium size. But due to delays and dismays, that budget is reportedly rocketing towards a cool billion euros. Launch has also slipped. It was long hoped it might happen in mid-2022, but now a date of late 2023 is the earliest anyone could realistically hope for. The original plans were to launch Euclid on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft, but since the invasion of Ukraine in early 2022, ESA has ended all cooperation with the Russians, and hence it won't be launching anything on a Soyuz again. In theory, there was always a plan if Euclid couldn't launch on a Soyuz. You see, the last iteration of the Soyuz spacecraft is the final one, and there was a very real possibility that the building of Euclid would be delayed enough that they'd end up launching after the end of life of Soyuz. So they must have had a backup plan already. That backup plan was originally the Ariane 5 rocket. This sounds great. That's a French company with a great relationship with ESA, and it has just launched JWST so precisely and perfectly that that mission has been able to extend its lifetime up to 20 years since it saved so much fuel due to the perfect placement into orbit it received. Euclid is going to the same distant orbit spot at Lagrange Point 2, about a million and a half kilometers from Earth, as James Webb. This all sounds good, except the Ariane 5 is also being decommissioned and won't be operating when Euclid wants to launch. Once again though, there seems to be an obvious solution. The new generation Ariane rocket, the Ariane 6, will be just about ready and surely has a chance of being even better than the 5. Officially, this is the current plan, to try and launch on Ariane 6, specifically the two booster version, the Ariane 62, as soon as possible. But it's not a perfect plan. Firstly, Euclid is finished. It's completely built and it's ready to go, basically sat in storage until launch. However, it was built with the plan of going on a Soyuz and its design perfectly withstands all of the vibrations of a Soyuz. Ariane vibrations are different and potentially more severe, and hence just sticking it on this different rocket could shake it to pieces during launch. This problem can probably be fixed though, with a specialist mechanical adapter between the telescope and the rocket, so it's not an impossible problem. The bigger issue is that Ariane 6 isn't yet ready to launch Euclid. Since the telescope is so expensive, it's not allowed to fly on the rocket until Ariane 6 has had two test flights and then two successful other launches before Euclid. Those dates aren't even confirmed yet, so we don't know how soon it could launch the telescope. The final issue is that in reality, Euclid can only dream of being third in the queue, because loads of other launches are currently ahead of the telescope in the launch queue for Ariane 6. These include the Galileo GPS satellites, which to be fair are pretty important and I think will take four launch slots. There's a French military satellite likely to launch too, and then a huge amount of commercial satellites as well that are ahead of Euclid simply because they can pay way more to get ahead in the queue. Included in these commercial launches are up to 18 Amazon launches to get their constellation of tiny satellites into orbit, and Amazon has plenty of money to secure their spots in the queue. The issue is compounded because lots of other payloads, as well as Euclid, have had to find alternatives to Soyuz after the invasion, and this is proving to be a popular choice. Also, Euclid Euclid is currently the only pure science mission in the queue, and government and commercial customers often have the most money. Science, not so much. I guess the big hope here would be some political lobbying to move Euclid up the order, by convincing enough powerful people in government and in the organisations that a science mission is worth launching ahead of a commercial satellite. For Euclid, it is a money problem too. 
Just to store the telescope could cost up to 100 million euros per year. So all the time that it's delayed is really expensive. This could be where SpaceX comes to the rescue. They've already delivered a host of successful launches for NASA. And technically, there are no reasons that a Falcon 9 couldn't deliver Euclid to L2. Also, a launch on a Falcon 9 rocket costs about 60 million euros. So even financially, this could make a lot of sense for the Euclid teams. There are, as ever, two potential problems that need to be sorted out first. Firstly, the aforementioned vibrations. We don't currently know how well Euclid would survive the forces of a Falcon 9 launch, but SpaceX are apparently carrying out a feasibility study at the moment, and we could know by the end of summer 2022 whether it's possible. The other problem is a little trickier and a little more subtle. It's deciding whether launching an ESA telescope on a SpaceX rocket would harm its relationship with Ariane Space, and whether the financial and scientific benefits outweigh that. SpaceX is one of Ariane Space's biggest competitors, so it wouldn't be great for ESA to launch on it because they're such good friends with Ariane. But at the moment, it seems like an otherwise great option. We have countless Euclid scientists just waiting for the scope to launch, and important science questions that we want to get cracking on. Interestingly, SpaceX has just been awarded the contract to launch the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope 2 on a Falcon Heavy. This is targeted for 2026 or so, and will be an impressive telescope that will work alongside JWST really nicely. I have a full video about the Roman telescope coming soon, talking about what it's going to do and why it used to be a spy satellite so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I'll keep you posted when Euclid finally confirms its launch vehicle, which should be by the end of 2022, and we'll see how delayed it ends up being either way. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!